I tested seven of the best online course hosting platforms, building my own website and testing the range of features. In this video, I'm going to tell you about the pros and cons of each of them, along with which is my favorite and why I'm using it within my business. Now, for a little bit of background, I run multiple different YouTube channels. The most successful one has over 400,000 subscribers, and I also make videos on TikTok where I have 250,000 followers, and my videos combined have around 400 million views across the internet. But one of the major revenue drivers within my entire business is selling digital products and online courses. And that means over the last couple of years, I have tested and tried out literally every single possible way of distributing these digital products and online courses. And in this video, I just wanna break down what each of the tools can offer you and which is actually the best one. Now, before we go on to any of the paid monthly subscription online website hosting services, let's first take a look at some free ways that you can host your online courses with uh, pre-provided marketplaces. And this is through the likes of Udemy and also Skillshare. This is the exact way that I started creating online Online courses because obviously you've got that pre-established place where you can just upload them with no risk you don't have to you know create a website have monthly outgoings on that website you just literally upload your videos then you can send traffic over there from your YouTube channel now Udemy was my first destination point for this and I don't like Udemy at all now that I host my own online courses main issue with Udemy was down to the refunding so what would happen on Udemy is you would sell a lot of courses and people would watch the entire course but because there was that 30 day money back guarantee and people didn't need to explain why they wanted a refund or even talk to a human or email somebody they just literally click a button and the money straight back in the bank account there's so many people and students on Udemy that just abuse that they'll buy a course watch it two three times enjoy the course and then just click that refund button and then go buy another 10 courses of some other people. And I think the platform has a really bad mentality because everything is so cheap and always in a flash sale. People don't value any of the knowledge that they watch these courses for. So they just use and abuse the website and they just don't even really care about the instructors and creators that are on there. Whereas when it's on your own site and you're selling it for the proper full price, like $60 instead of $12, people instantly value that purchase more. So you have a much higher quality of customer. They're only going to buy it if they're actually going to use it, thus not resulting in a refund. And then obviously you do have a refund policy on your own website, but they have to obviously email you and explain why they think it's rubbish. So they, they, they don't abuse it in the same way and they actually only purchase it with the intent of of enjoying it and consuming it. Now, Udemy was fantastic for obviously understanding that there was a demand for my online courses. We sold uh, hundreds and hundreds of courses on there in the short time that I was actually uh, located on that site before I moved over to my website. But another other a few elements of Udemy was they screwed you over with the currency conversion rates and also the commission. So obviously when you sell a course through the marketplace, whatever you get like 50% of it or 20% of the sale, depending on how it was generated through the Udemy search engine. But if you send traffic over yourself with your own creator link that you could throw in your video description, you would get 96% of the actual course generated revenue, which sounds fantastic. However, what would happen is most commonly, I was creating these online courses on Udemy and people were watching my YouTube videos that was promoting these courses and they were just typing Ben Rollins into the Udemy search engine and then I would only get 50% of the sale or 20% of the sale depending on how they went about it because they already had a Udemy account. And the reason why I knew this was happening was because people would like in the reviews or in the comments on the course go, oh, I bought this because of your YouTube video, Ben, this has been fantastic. And then they would check out that student and how much money they'd spent on the course and how much I'd received. And they just basically type my name into Udemy and I'd not been credited with the sale that I actually generated. This then brings us onto Skillshare. Now I actually do really like Skillshare and I'm still a fan of Skillshare and make courses on there that don't even go on my actual course website. So on Skillshare, I love the fact that you can create these mini courses that are anything from like 20 minutes to like an hour long. And you just throw them up there like basically like an in-depth YouTube video and they have an incredibly passive way of generating revenue. So on Skillshare, instead of you actually selling the course for $50, you get paid a royalty fee for per minute watched of your actual class. So every single minute watched by a student, you used to get paid around 8p per minute. It's now around 3 to 4p per minute because they changed how they pay the creators because I think they were having some cash flow issues. I'm not going to go into that, but they, they changed how they pay out the creators. So it basically halved, or, or more than halved some people's revenue on there. Reason why I love this model, especially when you're getting your confidence in creating online courses and understanding how it works, there's no refunds to deal with. So you don't make a course, sell it on Udemy or whatever, and then have someone want a refund they've watched the minutes. If they've watched 60 minutes of your course, you have been paid your royalty fee for those 60 minutes as a part of their Skillshare subscription. So you don't have any of those headaches and you don't lose any confidence and get demoralized going, oh, 
another great sales, but we're going to probably lose 40% of what money we've made this month because someone might refund it or, or whatever. So you have all that stress taking away. You just get paid for how much value you bring to the platform. This now transitions us onto some of the paid plans when it comes to hosting your own online courses on your very own website. Now I'm going to start off with the actual piece of software that I currently use that I've switched to, which is Kajabi. Now Kajabi is a super powerful all-in-one tool that allows you to create a, a bespoke website that looks absolutely stunning that you can then sell your digital products through. You can have a private community on there and you can also do coaching one-on-one. -on -one. Now Kajabi gets labeled as the most expensive option that I'm going to discuss in this video, but when you actually break it down, it, it's one of the cheapest because on the top tier plan of Kajabi, which is just shy of $400 per month, that includes four websites that you can use. So you get three websites plus a partner website within that plan. And you can use all of these websites for different elements of your business. So I have multiple YouTube channels. I've got a music YouTube channel, tech YouTube channel, media YouTube channel, and then a gaming one as well. So we, and some other ones that I own that, 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 we've, um, that we're just launching at the process. So we use all four of our Kajabi websites for different elements of my business, my music, my tech, my media stuff, my, my online coaching, et cetera, whatever. All of those different types of products that we may want to offer can be facilitated within one Kajabi subscription. So each website only costs us technically $100 per month. Then furthermore to this, you have all the additional tools that you don't get with all of the other uh, online services that I'm going to break down in this, this video, such as like email marketing tools, email templates. So you don't need things like click funnels. You don't need things like uh, MailChimp for, your, uh, for all your email marketing and obviously landing pages. All of that's taken care of within Kajabi, which makes it very easy to use. So once you understand how to build the website on there, all of that mental space just goes and translates straight over to the landing pages. You don't need to learn another software. You don't have another monthly subscription going out in order to facilitate that element of your business. It's all just within that $400 per month. It's incredibly powerful. Kajabi then also has some very useful analytical data that none of the other uh, online co course website hosting services do. So you can see how many views the website's getting, how many page clicks, what's the conversion rate on things, what's the retention rate on various elements of your courses. Uh, the the uh, You can see how much revenue is being generated daily, which you may think, well, that's obvious. But things like Podia, which we used to use, didn't tell you. You used to have to manually get the calculator out and go, okay, we sold 10 courses today. How much is that? Did it, okay, yeah, we made like $600. Ridiculous, absolutely stupid. Whereas like Kajabi tells you wh how much money you've made, also your refunds within there, like, oh, bloody hell, you had $200 worth of refunds this week on here, and you can see the big red line within the analytics. Fantastic stuff. This just allows you to monitor the overall health of your business, also improve the business as well, so you can test different landing pages, different offers, see what's selling better, and uh, it just overall, you can just do things with an informed decision instead of guessing and thinking, ah, that, that's maybe why we're not selling that many. It's fantastic. The overall quality of the website is significantly higher with Kajabi as well. Uh, we used to use Podio, which we'll talk about next, and that website was just super basic, whereas Kajabi's got like beautiful animations. We can have videos playing in the background of, of uh, landing pages. We can have the text sort of come in and out, fade in and out. And also it's it's much more dynamic in terms of how if somebody's watching it on uh, like their iPhone or their tablet or their, their webs uh, or on the actual like website on the computer, the website is much more flexible in how it displays on each of those devices and you can customize it for each of those devices. So it's just a much more tailored experience, which then allows you to justify a higher caliber of price. Instead of selling low ticket courses, like on all of the other services and just being, you know, uh, generic courses with a generic looking website, just give me some money type vibes. You can create a much better learning experience with the whole community area and all that type of stuff. So which means you can then warrant selling courses that are $1,000, $3,000, $4,000 with much more tailored um, learning experiences and pathways. Now, if you want to learn more about Kajabi, I have an extended 30 day free trial link down below in the description. This is 16 extra days that you get completely for free, literally for just clicking through that link, which gives you loads of time to get the website set up, get it up and running, and then launch it and start paying have the sales coming in. Next, let's talk about Podio, which was my old website hoster. Now, the reason why I first chose Podio, Podio was because of the cost element of it. So it claims that you have unlimited students and unlimited courses. And I thought, bloody hell, that's that's good. And it was like super cheap every single month. And at the time, I only had around like 10,000 subscribers on my music YouTube channel. So I thought, okay, you know, I don't have that much cash flow. So that, 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 that works. That works great for me. Not too much risk. I transitioned over from Udemy and gone, right, I'm going to build up my little website. Super cool. Got it set up. And it was great initially. But then once you started to get a few thousand students on there, it was okay when you had a couple hundred. When you had a few thousand students on there, it just couldn't handle that much traffic. So, for example, it says you can have unlimited students, unlimited courses. 
But the problem is the back end tools don't allow you to run the business efficiently when you have thousands and thousands of students on there. So for example, if somebody wanted to refund a course, we don't get that many refunds. On Udemy, we used to, everybody was clicking refund. But on our own website, we like got like two or three refunds a month. It's, it's absolutely minuscule. But when it comes to the refunds on Podia, what would happen is someone go, I, 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 I want a refund for this guy, a course, or I, I didn't, blah, 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 whatever. And you go, oh, great, whatever, so just go, go do it. If you would go into Podia, if they paid with Stripe, you could refund them within Podia without any issues. You just literally click refund, revoke access, job done, don't bother me ever again. Whereas if they had paid with PayPal, it was incredibly clunky. You couldn't refund them directly within Podia. It just it didn't exist. You would have to go into PayPal business, find the person's name that was moaning and wanted the refund, Find their name, right? It's Jeffrey, whatever he wants to refund you. Go find his name in, in the PayPal business. Okay, I found him. Click refund within PayPal business. Then go and find his name again within Podia to revoke access. Then send him an email to say, job done, mate. Thanks, all sorted. I uh, hope you enjoy the next course, whatever. So many manual steps, like four or five steps. Even logging into PayPal business was frustrating in itself because it never saves your login. You have to like type in your two verification code every single time. Even on the same day, you'll log in, then go and log in an hour later. You have to type in your verification code again. It's really annoying. So that was super clunky. Whereas with Kajabi, you can refund people directly within there, which is one of the main reasons why we switched over. You can refund them whether they're paid on Stripe, whether they're paid on uh, PayPal Business or whatever. Super easy, just click refund, revoke access, see you later, mate, sorted. So all these elements of Podia are super clunky and frustrating. Then as well, when it comes to the website builder, builder it's super generic. So you, you have the exact same website as everybody else who is using Podia. It just looks identical. You can change the colors, change a few pictures here and there. But you can, you can ins if you have any form of experience of looking at websites, you go, that's hosted on Podia, that's hosted on Podia, that's hosted on Podia. And eventually, especially people that buy online courses, they like buying online education from lots of different YouTubers. So they're gonna always gonna go, hey, hold on here, this guy's website looks the same as that other girl's website and that person's website. And oh, what the, it, then it just devalues the overall brand because it's so generic, just like, oh, they're all using the same website builder. Whereas with Kajabi, you can upload custom templates and also there's a bunch of provided templates that you can heavily modify so it doesn't look like anybody else's who's using that same piece of uh, software. Another stupid thing with Podia regarding the refunds was if you did do a refund, it would never discount it from the overall revenue that the website had generated. So you might have had, let's say, a thousand pounds worth of refunds over the last month and you wouldn't have that discounted from the overall revenue within the business. It, it would never, even if you did the refund directly within there and revoked all the access, it would never remove it from the total revenue. So you'd sit there and go, oh great, we made over a hundred grand on these online courses, but actually you may have only made 76,000 pounds. You don't know because it never discounts it from the thing until your accountant then does your year ends and you go, oh bloody, oh, bloody hell, I actually had 30,000 pounds worth of refunds this year. Not very good. Whereas again, Kajabi, it's all real time. As soon as you do that refund, boom, straight in the analytics and go, cry, crikey, there was $200 lost today on that person's course or whatever. So it's just all these things that are missing on there that are vital, especially when you have a huge amount of traffic coming through the site so you can monitor the health of the business. Next, let's talk about Thinkific. This was one that I almost used before Kajabi, but I hated the website builder. I just, I couldn't get it to do anything that I wanted it to do without it wasting a, a loads of my time and then it's still not looking 100% correct. Now I know a lot of other creators that are my friends that use Thinkific for their own courses and I've actually purchased courses that are hosted on Thinkific and I must admit, I'm a huge fan of the online course player on there. No way you actually sit and watch the course. Th that's absolutely fantastic. Like it, it's a beautiful customer experience for the, the video player and clicking next and, and all that type of stuff. And you can customize it nicely and all that type of thing. But the area that I do not like is the actual purchasing of the online courses. So when you go on a website that's hosted on Thinkific and you're browsing around looking at all the different products, I don't like how you build that as the instructor. And then I don't think it looks very good on the other end. It doesn't have all of the animations and things that just make it look a little bit polished. It's like 80% of the way there. And then it's just missing a few elements where you're like, oh, it's all right, but you know, it just hasn't got that finesse to it. And, and it is quite expensive per month. You expect the finesse to be there. And also, especially it claims that it's like a drag and drop website builder, but it just doesn't operate that way. It still works within blocks and all that type of stuff. They did recently update it. 
uh, and change a few things, which has refined it significantly. But when I fully tested it like a year or so ago, it just wasn't all it. Some benefits that it does have though over the likes of Kajabi is it's unlimited students and also unlimited courses. So this is fantastic. Again, you know, for the, for the monthly subscription you pay, especially if you've got a lot of low ticket offers like mini courses, you know, things that you would usually maybe just throw on Skillshare. If you're selling little courses like that, like maybe you've got like an arts YouTube channel, it's like how to watercolor and then how to watercolor a, a strawberry. And you've got all these little mini classes showing them how to draw certain elements and, and paint certain things. That is useful to have because obviously uh, Kijabi has a restriction on how many products you can have per subscription plan. So the biggest subscription plans are 100 products. Then you can get something called Kajabi Access, which doubles everything. You know, you get double the amount of students, double the amount of courses, and so on. Then you can negotiate custom things more likely down the road. But uh, obviously having unlimited things just reduces the overall stress that you, you, you uh, are thinking about. You go, oh, just throw that, throw that up, throw this up, throw that up, sell that, sell this, sell whatever. I do think Thinkific is a pretty decent option. They also have a free plan, which is like literally one course. Uh, that you can sell. This course also has unlimited students and zero transaction fees. So it's a fantastic way of just testing the waters without any risk whatsoever. Much better than maybe throwing it on Udemy. You maybe just got one course. You want to see uh, what's happening on there. So that, that is a solid option and a little bit better than how Teachable do things. So now let's talk about Teachable. This used to be the V1. This was like the market leader, I would say, one of the sort of first main tools when it came to making online courses on your own site. Now, Teachable isn't really a dedicated website builder. I would more describe it as a portal within your main site. So let's maybe say your main website's hosted on something like Squarespace or Wix or Shopify, but then you want to have this online education element to it. I would say Teachable is a great option for just using as that portal that people go over to like, you know, courses.benrollins.uk, so like, like a subdomain where that educational content is hosted in a more, more basically appropriate area that's made for that. Now there is a free plan on Teachable, but unlike Thinkific, it does charge you a uh, transaction fee. So it charges you like $1 plus like 10%, which is quite a bit, you know, it's $100 course. You may like, be paying like $11 per sale, much less than Udemy, but if you know, it could quickly add up, especially if you're selling quite high ticket offers, and you're like, bloody hell, 10% 10, 10 that was $100 transaction fee that we just paid out. <laughs> it, you know, it, it could hit you hard. Now this free plan lets you upload like one course. It can have unlimited students on all that type of stuff. Now back in the day, Teachable used to charge transaction transaction fees across all of their plans. Like even if you had the highest tier plan, they would still be cheeky and charge you a transaction fee. And the reason why this was frustrating is because you already lose 3% on average of every sale to Stripe and PayPal because they have their transaction fees. Then you would lose furthermore another 3% to Teachable while you were also paying these guys a monthly subscription to host the site on there, which, which is partly the reason why I never used them because that just irritated me. I was like, I'm already paying you guys. You don't deserve another 3%. Now, this has been resolved. You, you now have um, a 0% transaction fee on the higher tier plans, like the Pro plan and the Pro Plus plan, which is great. However, on the sort of middle tier plan that most people are probably going to still go for, it's 5% transaction fee still on top of like the $40 per month that you're paying. Now, although the transaction fees have been removed, Teachable has now introduced further restrictions on these higher tier plans. So the Pro plan, you only are allowed to have 50 products on there. And then the Pro Plus plan is restricted to 200 products. Now, to be fair, this is 200 courses, 200 coaching products, 200 digital downloads, and 200 product bundles, which is quite a lot. Whereas the Pro plan is only 50 products of everything. So 50 products of your coaching, your digital, like that's everything all encompassed into one. So you could quickly run out of that potentially. Now, when you break it down to the basic plan, which is maybe what a lot of people might go for, there's still a 5% transaction fee there, plus a restriction of only five products. So you can only have five offerings on there, maybe two online courses, a coaching program, and a couple of digital downloads. And then that's you sort of maxed out on your website. I do think Teachable is a strong option. I, I do think the overall experience for the customer is one of the best out there. And the different pricing tiers do make it very accessible for whatever stage in your business that you're at. I understand Kajabi can sometimes maybe be seen a little bit expensive because uh, they've only got three offerings, whereas Teachable has got around five offerings. They've got the free plan, then they've got the basic, pro plus, then even a business plan that allows you to scale even beyond there. So you've got a nice little progression path that you can just keep upgrading when and where you are ready to. I'll leave a link down below to Teachable in the description. I believe this gets you quite a large discount on your monthly subscription on there and also some uh, perks when you do your, your free trial. So I'll throw that in the, de the description down below if you're interested in this alternative. Now let's talk about one of the final options, which is interestingly Squarespace. Now I'm sure you've heard of Squarespace. They sponsor loads and loads of YouTube videos. So like this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, this, this video isn't, um, but we're gonna talk about Squarespace because 
I do think it's an interesting option. So back in the day, I used to host my website on Wix. So I had my master website on Wix, which was like the sexy marketplace interface for where people could browse the courses. And then they would actually purchase and watch the course on Podia. So we'd sort of funnel that traffic over to Podia. A little bit like how you would use Teachable in the last example. You would use it as a portal for the learning environment. And Wix worked quite nicely for this, but it didn't have any form of dedicated online course hosting at the time when I was using it. Whereas Squarespace has recently introduced its own online course and digital products element to its website builder. Now, I quite like the look of how Wix websites are. One, the website builder is very easy to use. It's got a bunch of different templates that look all fantastic and there's so many to choose from. You know, whereas some of these other online course websites is like 10, 15 templates to choose from. There's like hundreds of uh, Squarespace templates that you can pick from. And then from there, you can now add basically paid walled areas, like walled gardens that have got a paywall behind them that allows people to enter a place where you have online courses, private videos, and so on. Now, there is a restriction. You can only have a total of 10 member areas on a single Squarespace website, which does limit its scalability. Yeah, we have 25 courses on my music website, so Squarespace just simply couldn't host our online courses for us. We need something like a Kajabi or, and, and those types of things that allows you to have more courses. But it works very well as an alternative to something like Patreon. So I see a lot of creators and YouTubers sending their traffic over to Patreon where they just lose loads and loads of their monthly revenue and subscription to Patreon's like transaction fees and what they take out of there. Plus, they don't even own the customers on Patreon. So it's just it's not resolving any issues. The whole point of having a YouTube channel is to try and obviously get attention and whatever, but then to funnel that traffic off onto your own website where you own all the email addresses so you can contact them if anything ever happens to YouTube or your account gets leaked, you get hacked, you get... Uh, you know, cancelled or whatever, you can still have an element of your customer base that's super loyal that you can then rebuild from and then through word of mouth you can move to another platform and do whatever you need to do. But with a, like a Patreon or a Discord, for example, you're funneling all of that traffic over to another platform that you don't own or, or even at least own the customer data on there. And then you just have the exact same Catch-22 issue. If you get cancelled and your, your Patreon gets banned because you upload content that was against T's and C's or, or whatever, then you just lose all of that monthly revenue and everything that you've built there, maybe over two, three years, uh, and it was a waste of time. Whereas at least on a Squarespace, yes, you don't own the website builder, but you can export all them CSV files and all of the customer email addresses and keep them in a safe place. So you've got them there for when you require them and you can create the same premise as a Patreon. So you can go there for exclusive content, behind the scenes, free downloads. Maybe you do live streams in there and people can join in. It's like a little area for your community. And it's a nice, cheap and easy way to get that set up because of how easy Squarespace is to use. I'll leave a link down below for you to check out Squarespace. I believe, again, you get like an extended free trial with this link. Uh, I think off the top of my head. So I'll throw that down there if you're interested uh, for obviously setting this up. Because this is a completely different approach for the other ones. I wouldn't say it's a hardcore online course marketplace hoster. But it's a nice casual way to just bring in some subsidy revenue to help support what you do from your community. Now, if you want to learn more about Kajabi and everything that it can do and why I switched over from it and also how it compares to its main competitor, which is Teachable, you should check out this video next where I break down both of them in detail.